Hi everyone, this is a quick walkthrough of our software, webtesting.io. Webtesting.io is a new piece of software used for automated testing. It's really broken into two halves. The first part is the front end. The front end is a normal Excel spreadsheet as you see here. This spreadsheet resembles a lot like a traditional test plan. You have a test name column, your URL, uh, your form input values, action objects, expect the results and the actual results. The main difference is that these are actual triggers that run the tests. These are front end commands to your favorite automated software testing tool, Selenium. So in the back end, we have Selenium. On the front end, we have Microsoft Excel. It's two most popular tools in their respective categories. So let's just go through the test cases one by one. We're actually going to do a very simple checkout with Magento. So we have Magento running in the cloud right now and we're going to do a quick search. We're going to add to cart, go to the checkout, complete the guest checkout, and we're going to wait for four seconds. This will pause the script for four seconds and then confirm the shipping method, wait four more seconds, confirm payment method, and then wait eight seconds and then place the order and then close the browser. So we're going to run this example end to end to do a guest checkout. So we have the URL here and then we have our form input values. They are uh, saved and stored in YAML. YAML is very popular these days. Uh, it's very simple to read. It's in, in a very human readable format. And then column D we have the action object which could be either a form, button, or an anchor to execute the actual tests. Right? Um, we have an expected result column that will hold either class names, uh, tag names, or real identifiers within your web page. On the right hand side we have placeholders for our actual results that came back running with our favorite browsers. Okay, Now we can tell the software which browsers to test by going to our config tab and here we're going to do Microsoft Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox and we're not going to run Safari or PhantomJS for this particular test. So let's run the tests. Control W is how we execute the tests and here we go. The first thing that's happening right now is that we're calling Selenium on this desktop. This is running a local version of Selenium through Excel and now we're doing our first a test case which is doing a search for shirt and we're also now going to place this item in the shopping cart okay and then here we're going to place it's automating the test example right now clicking on the submit button, doing a quick little pause like we stated in the test cases. So as you can tell here, we're testing Internet Explorer. We're clicking on the Place Order button, and we have successfully placed an order. Now we're closing the browser and opening Google Chrome to do our Google Chrome tests. So we're pulling up our target URL in Google Chrome, and we are going to do the same search for shirt. And we're jumping through the test cases very quickly now. So if you have experience with Selenium, this will come very natural to you. This is very straightforward stuff. So now we're testing. This is the Google Chrome test. The last test we're going to do is 
Mozilla Firefox. So Firefox is now running in our shop.binos.io target URL is being loaded in the browser. We're doing the same search for shirt again. We will continue with the guest checkout as we did with Google Chrome and Microsoft IE. And we're about done with this last test within Firefox. Okay, and I think we're there. All right, so let's review the results. So on the right-hand side, we capture all the results here in real time. So we have all green passes. We did find the actual result. It is matching the expected result, so that came out fine. We are also capturing the timestamp of the tests. And so we go across the right, we see the test for Chrome came out perfectly fine and the test for Firefox came out perfectly fine. Okay, we go down a little bit and see our end tests and everything has been matching up very nicely. So our expected results are meeting our actual results. Um, lastly, we uh, also collect the metrics as a part of a historical uh, data set. So if you look at here, we just ran the example and so for our last test, we ran nine tests and then they all passed and so that gives us a score of 100%. That will end our tutorial for today. If you have any questions, please reach us at info at webtesting.io. Thank you.